Okay, so method one involves using flash fill. And when using flash fill, you type in the first value and then press Control E and Excel will try and guess what you want all of the other values to be. So in this case, it's successfully figured out that I want the first names. Then you can also type in what you want the value to be and then go to home and editing and flash fill. And that will put in all of the last names. Then the next method involves using text to columns. So select everything and go to data and text to columns. Then we're going to delimit the text and next. And the delimiter we're going to use is going to be a space and next. Then at the moment, the destination is this cell here, but I want to keep my original values. So I'm going to move it here and then finish. And it separates all of the text by space. Then the next method involves using Power Query. So select everything and go to data and then from table slash range and OK, and that will make a table and open it up in Power Query. Then go to Split Column by Delimiter and the delimiter will be a space and OK. And it splits all of the text into different columns. Then go to Close and Load To and we'll put this back into the existing worksheet and OK. Then I'll convert the table back into a range and also convert the Power Query back into a range. Then select everything and clear the formatting, delete the headings. Then all of these values are currently numbers stored as text. So I'm going to convert them to numbers and then close the query. And then we end up with the same values here as we did up here. Then the next method involves using a formula. And I think I will do a separate video explaining how this formula works because it's quite long winded. But I can just use this and click and drag to separate out all of the values. Then the next method involves using a macro. And to do this, you need the developer tab. So if you don't have this, right click and customize the ribbon. And then tick the box for the developer tab. Then go to the developer tab and select record macro. I'm going to call this split one and make sure you save it in the personal macro workbook and OK. Now the macro is recording, so I'm going to select everything and use text to columns again. So go to data and text to columns. We're going to use the delimiter and next it will be delimited by a space and the destination will be this cell here and finish. Then I'm going to go back to the developer tab and stop recording. And so the macro will have recorded everything that I just did and I'll see the code that it's written by opening up Visual Basic. And then it will be in this module here and most of this information I don't actually need so I'm going to delete it. I don't need any of this. I also don't need to tell it what range I'm selecting and don't need this either. I do need the selection part because that will tell it to use the cells that I have selected and then dot text to columns is telling it to use text to columns. Then all of the rest of this information is about the text to columns. So the destination tells it where to put the results. Then the data type tells it that I want to use the delimiter. I don't need this part here. 
then consecutive delimiter equals true. I'm going to leave that. This tells it that if I have two spaces next to each other to treat them as if I have just one space. Then this next part here is all of the different delimiters you can use. The default is false, so I don't actually need any of this except for the space equals true part. Then all of this, all of the rest of this information I don't need either. So I'm going to delete that and also delete that comma. All right, and then I have my macro, so I'm going to save this. And now if I delete all of this, I can run the macro. So I'll select these cells again and go to macros and select the macro I just created and run. And you can see it's put in all of that text separated by space. Now there's an issue with this, which is if I select a different cell and run the macro again, it still puts the results up here because I've hard coded in that I want the results to appear starting in cell K13. So I'm going to change this to make the location dynamic. And that will involve creating some variables. So I'm going to define R as an integer and then define C as an integer. Integer means I want these variables to be whole numbers. Then I'm going to make R equal the active cell dot row and C equals the active cell dot column. And the active cell is just whatever cell you have selected on the worksheet. So at the moment it's K14, and then here is now P18. And then it will take the row number and the column number for whatever the active cell is. Then I'm going to change the destination here, and instead of being range, it's going to be cells. And then the first value is the row index, so I'm going to put R in here. And then the next value is the column index, so I'm going to put C. And now the location where it puts the results will be dynamic. I'm just going to save that. And now if I go back here, I can select this and go macros and run the macro again. And now it's split up the text. But there's an issue with this because it's putting the results over the top of the original cell and so I'm losing the original text and I don't want it to do that. I want it to put the results starting in the column next to it. So I'm going to fix this by making it C plus one. And now no matter what cells I have selected, it will always put the results in the column next to them. And I will save this. And now if I select all of these values, I can go to macros and run it and I'll get all of the results again. Now I also want to add this macro to the ribbon. So I'm going to right click and customize the ribbon and then change the commands to macros. Then go to the review tab and open up the custom group here, which I made earlier. Then I'll select the split macro that I just created and add that in. Then I'll rename this as split text and choose an icon for it and OK. And then OK again. And now if I go to the review tab, I have split text here. And this will be in all of my Excel spreadsheets now. And if I just select this cell here and go split text, then it splits the text into these cells right next to it. Now the next method involves using Google Sheets. So if I open up Google Sheets, uh, Google Sheets actually has an inbuilt formula for splitting the text, which is just called split. 
and then the first value you need, you need to put in is the text you want to split and then the next value is the delimiter you want to use and this needs to be inside quotation marks so I'm going to put quotation marks with a space in between and all the other variables are optional so I can just close brackets and enter and then it splits all of the values for me. Now, unfortunately, Excel doesn't have an inbuilt split formula, but there is a split function inside VBA. So we can use a user defined function in order to make a split formula. So go back to Visual Basic and then select, I'll select the spreadsheet that I'm currently working in and go to insert and module. And then in here, the first thing I need to type in is function. Then I need the name of the formula that I want to make. Now, because split is technically already a function inside Visual Basic, you can't actually create another function called split. So I'm just going to delete the I from this and call it split anyway. Then open and close brackets and then inside the brackets I need to put all of the variables that I want to put into the formula. So I'm going to have RNG as range and then delimiter as string. And so the string just means that it has to be text. And then here I'm going to write what I want the split formula to do. It's going to be equals to split and this time this split here is the inbuilt VBA function and this works very similar to the one that's in Google Sheets. So the first value you put in is the text that you want to separate and for me this is going to be RNG which is the cell range that contains the text that I want to split. Then the next thing is the delimiter. So I'm going to put in my delimiter variable here. Then all of the other variables are optional. So I can just close brackets and then enter. And now I will save this and it will tell me that I need to save the spreadsheet as a macro enabled workbook. So I'm going to click no and then change this to a macro enabled workbook and save. Then here I would now be able to do equals split and the first variable that I need to put in is the text that I want to split and the next value needs to be the delimiter so that's going to be a space with quotation marks around it and then close brackets and enter and now I have split the values and I can click and drag to split all of the other cells as well. Now, because I have dynamic arrays, the results are spilling across multiple cells. But if you don't have dynamic arrays, you'll only get the first result. So in order to fix this, we are going to wrap this inside the index formula. To get the index formula to work in VBA, you need to type application.worksheet function dot index and then open brackets and the index formula works in the same way as you would use an index formula normally in Excel. So the first variable is the table that you want to index which is going to be the output from the split function in my case. Then the next value needs to be the column and as I will only ever have one column I'm just going to put one in here. And then the next value is the row and I'm going to put the number in here and then define a new variable up here which will be num as integer. Then we'll save this and now if I go back here I can do equals split and this time I need three things the text that I want to split the delimiter and then the number and I close brackets and enter and I get the first word out of good morning which is good and in order to drag this across 
I need to press F4 to put the dollar signs in front of the row number here and the column letter here and then enter and then I can click and drag this across and you see that it's splitting up all of the text but then also where it can't find anything it's giving me value errors so in order to get rid of the value errors I am going to wrap all of this inside the if error formula I am also going to put in here with application and then down here end with and then I no longer need to have these bits here I can just say dot index and it will know what I mean then I also need to dot if error open brackets and then if this here produces an error I want it to show me nothing so I'm going to put two quotation marks with nothing in between and then we'll save this and now I should just be able to click and drag and it will have updated itself and all the value errors will disappear now if you want to use this formula inside a different Excel spreadsheet then you need to take this code here and copy it and then paste it into the personal macro workbook so I'm just going to put it underneath the macro that I made earlier and then save that and now if I open up a different Excel spreadsheet in order to get to that formula I have to use the insert function feature and change the category to user defined and then select the split formula here and OK then these are all the values that I need to put in so the range and then the delimiter and then the number and OK and then again I need to press F4 to put the dollar signs around this so I can click and drag it then it's also possible if you remember what this formula is called you can just type it in so XLSB explanation point and then split and then this cell here and the delimiter and the number and that will also work okay so in this video I have shown you seven different methods for splitting text in Excel and that is everything